Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has reiterated that the June 17th incident at the Shoal in the South China Sea was not, quote, an armed attack against Manila's sailors and vessels. But he does believe the country needs to, quote, do more than just protest against China's actions in the disputed waterway. CNA's Berna Bernal with this report. Experts have underscored that the Philippines' best recourse in response to the June 17 incident that saw Filipino sailor severely injured in what the Philippines has tagged as China's deliberate and illegal assault is to go back to its old strategy during the 2012 Philippines-China standoff in a different area of the seas called Scarborough Shoal. And this Philippine strategy was essentially employing lawfare instead of warfare, meaning to say the Philippines tapped on legal alternatives rather than military intervention. This includes the Philippines filing a suit and shoring up international support. And this seems to be in line with what Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is implying when he stopped short of calling the June 17 incident as an armed attack. An armed attack could trigger provisions of the U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty, which has a commitment for each country to come to each other's aid should that armed attack occur, subject, of course, to constitutional limitations such as congressional approval. But President Marcos Jr. did say that the Philippines should go beyond the filing of diplomatic protests. And he also previously said that the Philippines is not in the business of instigating wars. He even praised the restraint and professionalism during that June 17 mission by elite Filipino Navy men whose rigid hull inflatable boats were rammed, towed, deflated, even as China Coast Guard personnel wielded bladed weapons at them. Now, National Security Council Assistant Director General Jonathan Malai, as early as November last year, revealed an interagency effort involving the Office of the Solicitor General as well as the Justice Department to look at the possible case that can be filed against China, given what the Philippines has laid labeled as its coercive actions, as well as alleged Chinese environmental degradation in the West Philippine Sea, which is how the Philippines calls its maritime zone in the larger South China Sea. Now, that 2013 suit filed by the Philippines led to the 2016 historic arbitral tribunal ruling that invalidated China's expansive claim that covers some 80 to 90 percent of the South China Sea. One important legal nuance when it comes to the second Thomas Shoal missions of the Philippines is that the same arbitral tribunal actually ruled that these Philippine missions to its outpost in second Thomas Shoal are military operations in nature and therefore it refused to take jurisdiction over the matter. Now, I've asked experts whether this legal nuance was emboldening China, but Filipino lawyer Michael Henry Yusinko said that China's actions are likely not solely driven by this legal nuance and has more to do with projecting its military might. They have a bigger Navy, uh, even bigger than uh, some of our allies, some of, some of uh, our allies who have committed to help us uh, when, when that time comes. So this is really purely, I would say, military or naval hubris on the part of Beijing, right? They do it. They harass us. They invade our territory because they can. As of June 18, the Philippines has filed some 30 diplomatic protests against China in 2024 and over 160 such protests under the administration of President Marcos Jr. thus far. Juana Bernal, CNA, Makati in Metro Manila.